hi everyone um today i want to talk about um communicating with animals i've got my very own little angel luigi king charles cavalier there you go so hi luigi <laughs> okay hopefully he will um sit still enough to um let us talk um it's one thing to communicate with um people that have passed over um, and to communicate with um, the angels um, and ancestors and guides. And then it's another thing to communicate with animals. Um, people think, you know, sometimes people think, well, they're shocked to hear that their animals communicate and um, that you can communicate with them and that they hear you and they understand you um, and that um, with proper skills and um, training, I think people could learn to communicate with um, their animals in, in different levels. Um, I think it goes like this. It's sometimes it's it's quite. I found there's quite a gap between being able to do this myself and then being able to explain to others how I do it and um, also try and teach other people to do it. So just to bear with me while I do my best. Um, it's like, you know, there's many different languages, all the different languages, there's Italian, there's English, there's, all, you know, all the different languages. And then, you know, animals have a language of their own. Um, in their own species, they understand each other. And um, so how do we cross that um, barrier into speaking horse or dog or whatever animal it is? And it's a love vibration. It's, um, it's about learning to quiet the mind so yoga helps meditation helps um random acts of kindness help it's it's a purification and it's a deep listening so how i experience it is um if i'm i actually my favorite animal to work with is um, horses i find that they're so strong and they're so still and they're so soulful that the communication is really easy. It's free flowing and I don't feel like I need to um, listen too hard or, um, or struggle to understand. I mean, even just the eyes of a horse will, will give a lot of the communication away in terms of, you know, when it's like with people and the light has gone out and inside of them and they've had bad experiences. Horses express that like us through their eyes. It's almost like a glaze, no one's home. And um, then again, when they're happy and they're there, it's their eyes shine out, like the, window, the eyes of the windows to the soul. Um, with dogs, it's a lot harder. I find it's almost like speaking to somebody who you talk to them and then they look out the window and then they go for a walk and they go shopping and they come back. I find that's how dogs communicate, where they'll, you'll be trying to listen to what they're trying to tell you, and um, then they, oh, there's a bird. Oh, do you have any food for me? Oh, let me give you a lick. Oh, let me go smack my friend. Oh, that smells like a nice flower in the garden, and they're off. And then if you're trying to understand what's happening to them, what their behavior is, what's going on inside, you then have to kind of bring them back and say to them, you know, okay, okay what's going on and really try and catch um their attention he's biting me at the moment so i'm i'm talking through the pain <laughs> he's a real he's a real sweetie um try to give him a shoe or something to bite onto um so so dogs get very distracted and i find them um quite hard to communicate with but eventually if you have the patience and you sit through it and you keep bringing them back and maybe a little bit of a treat to entice them um it works so there's many different there's many different i mean i've worked with quite a few different animals and dogs um communicating with animals i wouldn't say is my specialty or anything it's just something that um i've been able to do and it's more um something that I, I love to do and if somebody needs my help then I'll help them with it um, but like I said horses are my um, horses are, are my preference um, in terms of you at home um, 
may be wanting to communicate with your animals and um, learn how to hear them more, I'd recommend waking up in the morning and just taking a couple of deep breaths, breathing in, breathing out, and um, asking your angels and your guides to be able to help you to communicate and to understand your pet. And um, just, you know, some people say they don't have time, so whatever time you have, just give it that, whether it's two minutes or five minutes, or you have more time, like half an hour, or um, you can build up to it. But I would say that it's about um, learning to kind of take some quiet time where the dust can settle and the mind becomes calmer. Um, because being able to communicate with angels or ancestors or um, animals, it's pretty similar in that the mind has to be quiet. It, you can't be thinking about what you're going to cook for dinner or how somebody really stabbed you in the back or... Um, or all the many things that we, all of us, worry about. It needs to be where you kind of set aside time where you quiet the mind and you sit with your pet and you really just, every time your mind wanders, you bring your mind and breath back to the intention of um, wanting to hear them.